it's all good. I want to thank all of y'all for coming. And I want to thank the Wake Forest Sports Hall of Fame Committee for making this happen, for all the hard work they've done for the last two years. I wasn't sure it was going to happen. I wasn't sure I was going to live to see it. Uh, Pete Brubaker and John Curry uh, are meaner than snakes. They called me at the beach. I thought it was my interview that they were going to ask me tough questions about whether I was going to be on the Hall of Fame or not. And uh, those two scudders said, we want you to sing Mother So Dear. <laughs> and I thought that that was a requirement to get on the Hall of Fame. And I said, guys, in the fraternity, I was a non-singer. If this is uh, critical, you better find somebody else for my slot. I can't sing. Uh, I'm honored to be here as an inductee in the Wake Forest Sports Hall of Fame. Uh, I'm honored to be up here with these other great athletes. How flattering. I, I don't know. Uh, I think I'm probably the oldest inductee ever. I'm 77. And uh, there are some advantages to being older. Not many. But uh, look, look here. I've got this 50-year alumni pin. That's pretty cool, huh? You got to be old to get that. Uh, the other biggest advantage is, is that I've had the opportunity to see these other great athletes grow and develop and perform and do their thing. Uh, none of them and not many of y'all have been able to see me dive and you're all excused you hadn't been born yet. Uh, There are a number of people that I must share this honor and recognition with, and I thank you all for your support. I want to introduce some of my guests. My number one fan, my wife Susan Lupo, is a double deacon, undergraduate in, in the Wake uh, Forest uh, Bowman Gray School of Medicine. My son Dustin Taylor and his wife Jennifer, and their daughters Kate Taylor and Martha Taylor, and my daughter, Robin Taylor Belk, and her husband, Jake Belk, and their daughter, uh, Taylor Ann Belk. Now, I'm, I've already been over and talked to Wake Forest uh, School of Admissions about early admission for my three granddaughters. They're working on an exemption because uh, they found out that their parents went to University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill and, and NC State. So we, we've got to get around that. Uh, my brother-in-law, Dick Lupo, and his wife, Ann, and they've got two beautiful daughters, Mary Catherine Lupo and McCarthy Lupo, that have just graduated from Wake Forest in the last couple of years and have good paying jobs in, Winston, in uh, Washington, D.C. and New York City. So go smart deacon girls. Uh, Dick teaches uh, law part-time at uh, Wake Forest School of Law. His, his, his law practice is in Charlotte, but he teaches intellectual property at Wake's on occasion. When I was at Wake, um, 1962 to 66, um, Wake didn't have a diving coach, and they didn't have an instant video replay camera. I would have given my left arm to be able to see my dives in real time so that I could work out the problems. But I had the next best thing. Uh, my fraternity brothers would take time and come down and watch me dive and watch me do my thing and give me constructive criticism. And particularly my fraternity brother, Fred Sprock and Jim Simeon spent hours watching me dive and helping me that I had somebody to watch. When Leo Ellison saw that I had reached a dead end that I couldn't teach myself a dive that I needed for my degree of difficulty, uh, he went out and found uh, uh, executive vice president with Intagon, Jim Gilmore, who had been an Olympic contender in the 40s and would have been at the uh, 1944 Olympics, but uh, it was called off for World War II. Jim Gilmore came out and gave his time and uh, helped me with a couple of new dives. 
and I'll never forget, he must have been 45 at the time, he puts on his tank suit and he gets on the three meter board and shows me how to do a back one and a half twisting one and a half. And that, that helped me greatly and got me started. I was able to convert the back one and a half into a reverse one and a half and, and that was uh, pretty cool back then. Jim Gilmore passed away in 2005 and his son Jim Gilmore is here. And Jim, young Jim was telling me how proud his daddy was of me and how proud he would be to see this induction. Uh, it was a, a wonderful thing for him to help. My fraternity brothers, Lou Bissett, Carlton Prickett, Walker Nolan, escorted me to the 1964 Olympic trials in New York. Part of their training program was to take me bar hopping in lower Manhattan. <laughs> they, they thought I needed to relax. Uh, my big brother, my fraternity brother, John Bray is here. John's challenge was to help me keep my focus and balance my athletics, academics, and chasing girls, and uh, not necessarily in that order. I went to Wake for its academics, uh, but minored in athletics and uh, uh, girls. Wake, Wake had a swimming program from 1957 to 1980. 24 years. They no longer have a swimming program, and that's sad, but those were wonderful years. Hundreds of swimmers and divers gave their best efforts for those 24 years for Wake Forest. Wake probably had the smallest uh, swimming program of any of the schools back then, but competed well against the big powers, which then were Maryland, University of North Carolina, Chapel Hill, NC State, Virginia, University of South Carolina, Duke, Clemson, and Wake did well. Wake small does not mean Wake weak. They did well. I'm proud to be the poster boy for the swimming and diving alumni. I'm the only representative they have and probably ever will have on the Sports Hall of Fame, and that's quite a responsibility. I'm awfully proud. My friend Bruce Millette couldn't be here, but he was a swimming alumni and he spent hours and hours researching the ACC records in support of my nomination. And he was telling me stuff that I didn't remember and other stuff that I never knew. I've been regularly asked about, weren't you afraid diving? And my response was consistently, yes, I was terrified. Uh, I have acrophobia, fear of heights. So every time I was on the three meter board, I was afraid. And I was always afraid of hitting the board because to do a dive right, you need to keep it in close to the board and stay vertical. And of course, that's when you're most likely to hit the board. So I, I stayed afraid. But I, I remember the first time that I was ever asked, Drew, what's the thrill of diving? And that was uh, in my junior year, 1965. I had some injuries and I spent a lot of time in the uh, whirlpool bath. Wake only had one and it of course was in the football training room. So I had to share it with the football players. But I'd be over there and I'd be sitting in the hot, in the hot tub in the whirlpool. And it seemed like my friend Brian was always there. Brian was black and blue from his ankles to his waste with bruises from being tackled so hard and so often. And one day we're sitting in the tub and Brian out of the clear blue says, Drew, what's the biggest thrill of diving? And I had to think about it a minute. And I said, Brian, I think it's being able to take off the board and set your body in motion in four different directions at one time, spinning, twisting and flipping and coming out with a clean entry. And Brian just grinned and said, yeah, yeah, like going through the other team's defensive line and bouncing off six tacklers and making it across the goal line. And I said, yeah, yeah, a lot like that. <laughs> well, my friend Brian Piccolo was the national leading ground gainer 
in football that year, 1965, his senior year. And I am so proud to be on the list of the Wake Forest Sports Hall of Fame with my friend Brian Piccolo and with all these other great athletes. It's an honor. And I think that y'all can share that the biggest thing that we all have to look forward to is how many more future great athletes Wake Forest is going to get, and we're going to get to watch them perform. So keep going, Deacons, and thank, thank you and thank Wake Forest.